All right, so we've done quite a bit for uh, Warhammer 40,000 lately, and I want to kind of switch gears back to Total War Warhammer. Um, and I want to do something that we, that we haven't really touched on. And it's something that I don't think a lot of people have touched on just yet because we haven't gotten the full confirmation from Creative Assembly. But I want to start kind of delving into the Ogre Kingdoms. And I want to start off with the lore of the Great Maw because there's a lot of really cool spells in here. And I think as a whole... It's something that that not a lot of people really think about when they think about the Ogre Kingdoms. When you think about Ogre Kingdoms, you think of an army that's consisting entirely of monstrous infantry with their thundering charges and their ogres that they get these cool big names. Like that's actually the thing, like big names of the ogres, and it gives them certain abilities. Like there's Death Cheater, Giant Breaker, Maw Seeker, really cool stuff. Um, the Ogre Kingdoms in general has a lot of have a lot of really cool flavor and character that's like a step up from Greenskins, but a lot of the same kind of feel that you get with Greenskins. But they're a very very fun army. I'm excited to start talking more about them with you guys because I think a lot of you are really going to enjoy uh, how their lore is handled, or how their magic is handled, or or who can even cast their magic. So it's going to be a lot of fun here to go into what is the lore of the Great. Ma. In 7th edition, it was called Gut Magic. Um, it's also known as Gastromancy or Shamanic Victuals. <laughs> but we'll go over the lore attribute, the signature spell, and then the uh, six spells that make up the lore itself, as well as uh, what spells I think would also be part of or at least which are comparable to what we already see in Total War Warhammer 2. Um, and these are going to be obviously for a hypothetical Total War Warhammer 3 when we hopefully go into the Mountains of Moor and the Shadowlands. Um, it, it's just entirely conjecture at this point here, guys. Uh, so do take this all with a grain of salt. This is what I think, how I think this would be implemented in the game, not by any stretch of the imagination, uh, set in stone. I don't, I don't make the calls, shoot the shots, or drink the drinks, whatever it is. But let's get into the lore of the Great Maw. But we'll start out with the lore attribute. As every single lore has this, um, we will obviously have a lore attribute to work with here. So the let me read this little cool blurb here. And I'll read this. Every single spell will have a nice little cool a one or two sentence uh, lore blurb we'll go into too, but the lore of the Great Maw has many recipes for disaster, and butchers often chew flesh, suck marrow, or stuff some raw gobbit into their mouths to aid their casting or replenish their own, replenish their own vitality. Um, and that's that's a big thing too. Here is butchers are their casters, so um, the way that their blood blood, blood gruel that's the name of their lore attribute it works is you know, and a lore attribute for total war warhammer is something that kicks in every time a spell is cast just like it is in, t in tabletop so like we think of the shield of safari gives an army-wide buff to increase ward resistance which is, e is which is just massive if you've got like a phoenix guard well the way blood gruel works is um it has a chance to actually heal the caster so that'd be kind of a cool little attribute here is because the casters of the ogre kingdoms are are not are, are none too shabby um i don't want to say the famir to draw a direct correlation between them because the famir can still be a little weak here and there the ogre the, the ogre butchers are, are quite monstrous like all of the um units for the ogre kingdoms i think are going to be hard to bring down but there's not going to be a lot of them on the field so you'll be able to kind of swarm them a little bit we'll, we'll kind of talk more about that when we go into the ogre kingdoms strategies and, and, and battle an army as, as a whole but butchers are are none are, are none too uh afraid of a good melee so this ability to have um your your caster constantly healing himself while he's casting off spells is pretty pretty insane it's just like when we're using a high mage and you're, t you're constantly hitting that shield of safari to increase your army's uh, ward save across the entire army that's gonna be the same thing here where you're gonna want to keep casting spells so blood rule keeps constantly healing um the the, the butcher and, and we're gonna hear a little bit about these spells and why they're gonna be so important because the actual uh magic here the the, the lore of the great maw pulls from a lot of different lores we already have seen you've got spells that are like light you've got some that are like life uh, you're going to see some stuff that is like uh, uh, death magic as well, and even some spells that are like wild. So you're going to get a lot of combinations here, and, and, and it's something that they definitely need because they only have access to this lore, and they get all of the spells um, from the tabletop. There's no rolling for them or anything like that. So this, this signature spell is Spine Marrow. And in the tabletop, that means signature spell just means that's the spell you get from the start. 
Um, and that's what we could usually see in campaign. How you know how you campaign, you always have one thing. Like for instance, plague priests always have um, uh, pestilent breath or plague breath to start off with. So that would be a signature spell. Be an example of it. The butcher holds up a gory spinal column and sucks out all the blood and marrow to empower his companions. So this is essentially just a augment spell, and it's going to work at a specific unit, and it'll essentially make them immune to psychology, makes them stubborn. So the way I could see this being incorporated into Total War Warhammer is just that. It's just simply an augment ability. You target it at a unit, or you can um, maybe make it a, a longer range. On the tabletop, it just simply increases the range when you overcast it. It doesn't maybe make it so... It doesn't affect more units. It's still only a one targetable unit. If you were able to select multiple ones, it'd be pretty, it'd be pretty damn... OP, as they say in France. But that's just a signature spell, just spine marrow. And we're going to get a lot of really gory, kind of uh, disgusting descriptions of these spells. And it's kind of very thematic to the army here. So just stick with me. Uh, so the first actual spell on the list, the, the actual number one of six, is Bone Crusher. Shoveling a handful of ribs, skulls, and femurs into his mouth, the butcher crunches them up even while he curses his foes, who immediately find their own bones breaking with loud, snapping sounds. And this one isn't, isn't anything too crazy, it, 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 despite what that description made it sound like. Holy crap. Um, this is just simply a magic missile. It doesn't, it's not even a really high, hit, heavy-hitting one. But it doesn't allow for armor saves. So you already are going to start to see a correlation here with something like an Amber Spear. Something that has a high AP single target um, damage. Even in that in and itself is a, is a magic spear missile, I guess I'm going to say. Um, but I'd love to see it just incorporated directly like that. Something quick, something easy. Just boom, hit the target. Have a lot of AP on it because this allows no... The Basically what this says is that causes... 2d6 strength 2 hits with no armor saves. Strength 2 is pretty low, so it doesn't have a high chance of actually hitting. But if it does hit, you can't save against it. So that's why I'm saying AP, just like an Amber Spear that we see in the lore of Wild. Moving over to the second uh, spell here, Bull Gorger. Greedily devouring the heart of a bull rhinox or mornfang, the butcher can project the raw vitality imbued by such a worthy sacrifice to the great maw. Of course, the great maw being um, their their uh, patron god or god, goddess god thing that we'll talk about here um, later. And really, not much of a god. It, we'll, we'll get into it. It's kind of like a meteor, but it is what it is. But bull gorger essentially just increases the it, from tabletop perspective it increases the strength of the unit so that strength could be maybe equated to weapon damage from total war for total war warhammer so it could be just exactly like a weissen's wild form um with maybe curbing the whole fact that uh, weissen's wild form um is going to help out on more than just weapon damage it's going to increase armor this would just increase weapon damage um, it, i don't think it would increase melee attack because if it increased melee attack um, it would say weapon skill. Remember, tabletop, the equivalence between weapon damage and, and uh, uh, wep or melee attack in tabletop would be weapon skill for melee attack because that's your likelihood to hit. Weapon damage would correlate to strength because that's the amount of damage you would do when you do hit. So, And again, this entirely conjectured that that might not even happen that way, but that's my kind of correlation with that. And um, the, the cool things with the next two spells we're going to talk about in tabletop, when you overcast them, it has the ability to target all friendly units within a range. And I could easily see that being the, the case here. Um, because the, the well, while the ogres don't necessarily rely on their magic, their magic is extremely helpful for them because they do have to deal with other units that have magic. So they need to kind of have kind of bring something to the fore when they have access to no other lores than this. So this kind of gives them a nice little edge up. Um, maybe not so huge of a bonus to weapon strength because I expect these guys to have Quite a large weapon strength out the gate. Let's jump on over to our third spell here, Tooth Cracker. By consuming a hunk of tooth-breaking granite, the butcher bestows the rock's resilience and the sturdiness of the mountains themselves into his brethren. Tooth Cracker is another augment spell, and this is going to increase the toughness. So uh, I look at that as the melee defense, unless um, the actual uh, armor melee defense kind of correlating to the, the chance of actually getting hit. So... While I don't think this would be exactly like a Faw's Protection, because Faw's Protection, uh, I believe, does both armor 
and melee defense, I would see this as just having a melee defense. Um, you could you could argue that it, it could be like some other spells, and I just it's just an easy correlation because these spells aren't like very hard to cast on tabletop. So they're supposed to be kind of bottom tier spells. And if you're looking at the looking at any of the lores in Total War Warhammer, the first four or so are typically, you know, they don't have a special border. It's just a kind of a let me take a look here. Actually, I think it's just a white border. Yeah, it's just like, oh, a gray border. Then as, as of course, as you go higher, it's got green. Then it moves up to a blue. So it's like the first two are kind of, eh, hmm, this isn't hard to cast. The next two, eh, kind of a mediocre one. Then the last two, you're going to need a lot of winds of magic for this. These spells, I don't expect to have a lot of winds of magic. But overcasting them will have a lot of winds of magic. For instance, Toothcracker can be cast on a roll of 8 plus in the tabletop. Overcasting it which means it would, it's going to target all friendly units, just like we were talking about with Bull Gorger. It has to hit on a... Uh, casting value is increased to a 16 plus. So I, I'm going to see that... I'm going to say that casting them off just on one unit is going to be easy for uh, any Butcher, but I think that overcasting for uh, the Ogre Kingdoms in general is going to be quite costly. It is really going to be a, a hard endeavor. So it, you're going to have to really trade off. Do I want to increase the abilities of multiple units across different facets or do i want to only increase all my units with just this one spell because if i mean if i were to correlate this to directly to total war warhammer 16 winds of magic if i'm if i'm just saying it like that is pretty substantial um depending on how they do the butchers and how it how it really equates to their winds of magic generation i don't think they're going to have like an arcane conduit or something that increases their winds of magic substantially so i think that's going to be kind of like the balance factor of them they're going to have access to all these really cool spells that enhance and increase their, their army, but all at the same time, I think they're going to be kind of limited by their winds of magic because I don't think they're going to be able to replenish it as much. You know, you've, you've got wood elves who can scamper off into the trees and all of a sudden they feel better by touching the roots, but <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how they're going to do that with the Ogre Kingdom. Let's move on here to the uh, Brain Gobbler, though. It's our fourth spell. And selecting a severed head attached to one of the meat hooks secured about his person, the butcher chomps through the skull and gobbles up the gray dainty within, projecting his victim's worst nightmares into the mind of his enemies. And if, if it doesn't sound obvious to you, to you guys from here, this is simply a, like a direct copy of Doom and Darkness. It's just a straight shot to the leadership. So the unit has to make a panic test in the tabletop again. We don't have panic tests. We don't have panic tests or initiative or strength tests in uh, Total War. I think this would just be a straight shot to the leadership um, with the ability to either uh, choose to maybe just increase the actual range of effect that it, that it does or either overcasting and increase the actual range of effectiveness. So I'm not really sure how they would overcast Brain Gobbler. Maybe no overcast ability, just a straight bomb of it. But number four is pretty easy to talk about. Again, just a straight copy of Doom and Darkness. Number five, though, is Troll Guts. Downing the toxic and utterly repulsive innards of a troll isn't easy, but by doing so, a butcher can magically transfer the beast's supernatural healing ability onto himself or nearby companions. The ogre's wounds seem to stitch themselves together before the eyes of their dumbfounded enemies. And this grants regeneration to the target. And it really reminds me a lot of what we see in life, right? With like a earth, little earth, earth blood um and regrowth but the nice ability here is with with regrowth you can only target an ally right and with earth blood you can target allies in a range so it doesn't say it does anything other re other than regeneration whereas regrowth adds a physical resistance so maybe we're just looking at an ability here very similar to a uh, earth blood where you're just popping off a quick heal for your whole army or, or for a unit or for units and that's in the in the range so that's again a pretty easy copy the, the latter two spells being pretty easy pretty direct copies of what we already see in total warhammer total war warhammer one and two so it's, it's probably a pretty direct correlation here but the last spell and, and this is a pretty cool one number six the maw by consuming the better part of a large beast, the Butcher can summon the power of the Great Maw itself, causing the ground to split wide open an enemy, an enemy and revealing a tooth-lined bottomless pit that hungrily snaps and snarls in anticipation of its next meal. Eternal pain awaits any who fall within. You know, just like the Sarlacc. 
exactly from Sar the Sarlacc, from Tatooine. This is you, you basically summon a portal to Tatooine, and out comes Boba Fett from Sarlacc's anus. Something like that. Um, or just like a ground vagina, whatever it is. So basically, this thing is, is it's got some interesting tabletop special rules, but let's just kind of say what the correlation would be like. It's just going to be your typical vortex spell, but it's not going to move. So it's just going to, you place it once, it just does some damage. Um, in the actual tabletop, it draws uh, a close correlation to the purple sun of Zerius. In the tabletop, purple sun of Zerius causes an initiative test, meaning that you, you have to roll a dice, and if the dice is um, lower than your initiative, then you're dead, basically. The way this thing works is it, you you choose, okay, I want to place this thing right here. You roll a, a thing called an artillery die. The artillery die will tell you what direction it moves, or it'll say misfire. If it says misfire, your opponent is to say, I choose where this goes. I don't know how they'll make that uh, conversion into Total War Warhammer. They, they might not. They might just completely drop it and make it kind of like a static purple son of Xerius that has a really cool graphic and it's only on the ground. Um, it, it does have pretty heavy damage, uh, pretty high strength hits on things that it actually does hit. So I say Purple Son of Xerius, not only because it has a correlation in tabletop, but it has, I would say, a good one in Total War Warhammer because it has AP damage, just like I would expect the Maw to have. So with that, I think overcasting it would be an ability that would make it larger, which I think would be really cool. We don't see these Vortex spells too often with the ability to overcast them to any good effect. Like, oh, I'd love to just overcast this puppy and make it huge. Like, I know you can do the actual Purple Sun of Xerius. You can upgrade it and just ex it extends the effect duration. But I'd love to make it so it was an actual bigger vortex and, and make it a lot more scary. Like, if I'm walking, walking down the street here and I see even giant, it, an even bigger uh, ground vagina demon creature, I'm going to freak out more. I think it could definitely kind of help you kind of curb some of the charges or, or maybe even mess up the back line of an enemy with uh, this spell. I, I'm pretty excited for how they're going to make that translation because I'd really love to see them keep intact that ability to have your opponent choose where it goes if something messes up, some sort of random dice roll. Because they, they did a really good job at adding the randomness of everything into the Skaven army in their own kind of Total War fashion, with their own kind of Total War flavor. So I'm really excited to see what they do with the law, the lore of the Great Maw because I think there's a lot of opportunities to make it a, a very sand or uh, kit, you know, kit, kit toolkit, toolkit, that that thing, uh, toolkit like lore where the the ogres have access to a lot of different abilities here. You know, like I was saying, bull gorger is uh, your increase to melee weapon or uh, weapon damage. So just like your Weissen's wild form, your toothcracker is very similar to what we see with Foss protection, and I mean troll guts is basically a, 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 a not a regrowth, but a um. Earthblood and, and Brain Gobbler is basically a Doom and Darkness, so it's it's all very, very easy to make a correlation between what we've already seen in the game. I just hope they kind of add a little Ogre Kingdom flair to it, something a little special. But that's the lore of the Great Maw here for you today, guys. Uh, this is our first foray into the Ogre Kingdoms. We'll be doing more and more of them as we slowly march on down the, down the road here. I didn't forget about Tomb Kings. I will be doing the lore of Sand and, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the lore of Kemri and, and their whole... Uh, tomb king lore and i will be doing the army list of the tomb kings i, I deliberately kind of held off because i saw that whole dev blog and they were saying hey yo no uh, we're going to be having our tomb kings in january so i figured i don't want to drum up a ton of excitement for you guys until we at least get closer to january where it's like oh man the, now the hype train can follow through all the way into tomb kings versus thanks for the hype train ryan just in time for christmas where i get no goddamn tomb kings under my under my uh christmas tree you don't celebrate christmas i'm sorry happy holidays to you for whatever you do do um but again guys tire <laughs> digression aside um that's the lore of the great Maw. if you have any questions about the tomb king or no about the ogre kingdoms and there's anything you're excited to hear about go ahead and let me know in the comments uh don't forget to uh follow me on twitter because i will be having some more updates on twitter as much as i can but thanks for watching here today guys have a good one and take care